Hi guys. So as a scientist who studies aging, one of the questions I get asked all the time is whether or not we can stop aging. And although my answer to this question isn't a yes, I am going to give you a bit of an overview of some of the scientific research and interventions that have been shown to slow down the aging process. And unfortunately, it is slightly more complicated than just applying an anti-aging cream. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking about calorie restriction. And the reason I've started with this one is because calorie restriction has been studied for over 80 years now. Now, the most important thing to note here is that calorie restriction is not malnutrition. So for this to work, animals must still receive all the correct nutrients in their diet to ensure that they don't become malnourished. It was first recognised in 1935 when a scientist called Clive McKay discovered that rats that were fed on a calorie-restricted diet had an increased lifespan. And since that initial discovery in rats, many other scientists all over the world um, began to become interested in this. So in 1937, the same was shown to be true in flies. And then in 1946, scientists Carson and Holzel suggested that calorie restriction in humans might not actually be very appropriate. So instead, they began to look at intermittent fasting. And this was shown to also increase lifespan. And again, this was done in rats. So in the 1960s, scientist Bergen Sims found that calorie restriction delayed or even prevented the onset of certain pathologies such as obesity and cancer. And then in 1970, Wolford started to use the model to study aging. And he published that the immune system in mice that were fed a calorie restricted diet had an immune system that developed much slower and that they also stayed younger than the control mice. And prior to this point, many people believed the calorie restriction acted by delaying development. However, in 1985, it was shown that if you began calorie restriction after an animal had already fully developed, that it also extended lifespan. So it wasn't simply due to a delay in development. But then this led to the question of how calorie restriction was actually working. And also it demonstrated that aging is a multifactorial process. So in the 1990s, calorie restriction began to be tested on non-human primates. So these are kind of monkeys. And this work was quite controversial. So the University of Wisconsin showed that 80% of calorie-fed non-human primates were still alive at a time when only 50% of the control animals were. So this suggested uh, quite a moderate improvement in lifespan. However, the National Institute of Aging concluded that in their study, there was no positive impact of calorie restriction on survival at all. But despite these controversial results, calorie restriction has still managed to make it into human trials, um, and this began in 2007. The Comprehensive Assessment of Long-Term Effects of Reducing Intake of Energy, or Calorie Study, was designed to determine the biological effects of prolonged calorie restriction in humans. And the trial was divided into two phases. So there was an initial phase that was designed to try and determine what degree of calorie restriction should be used. So 20%, 25% and 30% were used. And from this, a two-year study was then designed. Um, and this was a two-year randomised clinical trial that was going to be done at 25% calorie restriction. So the specific purpose of the study really was to test the hypothesis that two years of sustained calorie restriction would slow aging and protect against any age-related diseases. The study was designed to include 200 healthy non-obese participants, and this is going to be both men aged 21 to 50 and women aged 21 to 47. So the specific aims of the study were to assess whether calorie restriction could sustain metabolic adaption by reducing core body temperature and by reducing metabolic rate. And also to assess whether calorie restriction could reduce inflammation and thyroid hormones as these had been suggested to mediate aging changes. Okay, so the results of the study showed that participants achieved a 12% calorie reduction. So this was obviously short of the 25% aim, but this did also result in a 10% weight loss over the two years. And in regards to the kind of primary outcomes, the intervention was shown not to change the core body temperature and it didn't lower the metabolic rate. 
The intervention did, however, significantly affect the inflammation and thyroid hormones. So there was a reduction in the circulating levels of T3, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone, and TNF-alpha and CRP, which are both inflammatory markers. It also decreased triglycerides and total cholesterol, decreasing the LDL, which is the bad type of cholesterol, but then at the same time it actually increased HDL, which is the good cholesterol. Um, there was also reduced blood pressure and an improved glucose control. So in general, um, it had cardiovascular benefits. Now this is obviously just a short study and it isn't feasible to kind of study the lifespan in humans in a randomised trial. However, the results do seem quite promising um, and there does seem to be a real health benefit, especially if you look at like reduced inflammation and cardiovascular protection. However, there are still obviously some problems with this. Um, the intervention still isn't 100% proven in humans and it's still unclear if in humans it will increase lifespan at all. Although we see these health benefits, that doesn't necessarily directly relate to an increased lifespan. And even if it did, we don't know how many years you would benefit from. Would it be two, maybe five? Who knows? And then also, is it really feasible? So especially in today's world, we're constantly being bombarded with lots of fast food and high calorie diets. And I'm not really sure whether that's going to change anytime soon. And also, would people really want to limit themselves to this kind of restricted diet, especially when the data isn't 100% proven? And also, it could actually encourage some people to have unhealthy eating habits. Um, so if it wasn't actually done correctly, this could be detrimental rather than beneficial. So in case you found any of these uh, particularly interesting and wanted to find out more, I'm going to add the links below to some of the websites that I got the information from and leave a comment below so that I can read what you guys think, whether you think it's a good idea, a bad idea. And if you have any other kind of interest, then make sure you watch out for my next video because I'm going to be talking next time about telomerase therapy and senolytic drugs, which are other types of therapies for aging. So yeah, go and subscribe and keep an eye out for those. Thank you.